Hi, I'm Pam, and I'm the social media director for my CSE group, and I'm here with... Hi, I'm Danielle. Hi, Danielle. Um, can you please tell us a little bit about your healthcare background? I am a registered nurse here. I work at a large hospital in San Diego. I'm currently an operating room nurse, and I also have a background in labor and delivery, and I'm a certified public health nurse as well. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so starting with the questions. Um... Can you, please, can you please describe your experience in managing opioid me medication within a healthcare setting? So opioid medications are highly regulated within a healthcare setting. They, are, they have very strong regulations on who can pull the medication, how they're given, how they're wasted, um, things like that. Back in the day, they were not regulated at all. So pretty much any person in a hospital had access to these medications. However, now you require a doctor's order to retrieve an opioid medication from the medication dispensing system. And um, once you have that opioid medication and you give it to the patient, you have to have another healthcare professional, whether it be a doctor, anesthesiologist, or another nurse, actually watch you um, give that medication, such as like fentanyl. And then you have to have someone watch you waste the remainder of that medication. So if you were supposed to give half of the vial you have to have someone watch you waste that medication to verify that you actually threw it in an approved dispenser and you did not take it home. Because there is an issue with um, people, especially healthcare workers, one, abusing opioids, and two, they can resell them on the black market. So opioid ma management in the hospital setting is extremely regulated and monitored to track who's pulling it, how much are they pulling, and are they wasting it appropriately. So anytime a nurse or doctor pulls an opioid from the medication system, it is tracked to that person. So they can look at the end of the month of how many times someone pulled an opioid medication. So it would be reasonable for a nurse to pull it about 30 times in a month. So if someone were to pull it 300 times, that person would be flagged. And this has actually happened before, even within San Diego. There's been a nurse that pulled you know, an opioid over 300 times, and they weren't actually even giving it to the patient. They were just straight up pocketing that medication. So opioids are very strongly regulated in the healthcare system to avoid um, misuse and, um, you know, straight up theft. Mm. Wait, what do you mean like wasted? Like where do they put it? I know you said you di they dispense of it, but like what happens to the actual liquid? Like so the actual liquid goes into a biohazard container um, that only uh, certain individuals have the key to access and it just goes into a huge um, formula. So you're physically mm. throwing the liquid into this formula of, of just mixture and it goes into a biohazard waste. So it is literally destroyed. Okay. You wouldn't be able to extrapolate from that anymore. Mm. Okay. That's cool. I didn't know that. That's kind of crazy. Okay. How do you stay updated on the latest research and guideline guidelines related to opioid use and management? The hospitals are really good about updating individuals on opioid um, you know, medication, whether it be um, administration or wasting or proper usage and guidelines towards that. But even as a registered nurse, um, every two years you have to renew your license and you have to do educational units to be eligible to renew your license. Um, so you can stay up to date on opioid use through that, through those educational units, but also just being a part of, for example, I'm an operating room nurse. So there is um, an association for operating room nurses. And part of that, um, you know, membership is that you're receiving constant updates on new technology, new medication advancements, opioids, whatever. So it's important to be a part of, you know, your community and just understanding what's going on. But even in the healthcare setting, they do a great job of keeping us up to date on the newest technology and, and data regarding opioids and, and medication and pain management. Okay. That's cool. Okay, thank you. Um, last question. Can you provide an example of a challenging situation you faced regarding opioid management and how you handled it? Yeah, so opioid management is very difficult because you are dealing with people that are in pain. And some of these people have legitimate reasons to be in pain, such as, you know, when I was in labor and delivery, delivering a baby is extremely painful. And so it is very reasonable for someone to ask for pain management and opioids unfortunately are the best form of pain management um, but even there's situations um, such as sickle cell anemia it 
uh, mostly is in African American individuals, and they are in such great pain, especially if they're in a sickle cell crisis. And a lot of times people see them as drug seekers and they don't take their pain seriously. Um, but they are really in a great amount of pain and they, you know, they frequently want opioids because that's what helps manage that pain. So that's kind of where you run into this issue with opioids is you don't want to give opioids because they become addictive and, you know, they have all these terrible effects that we've seen um, over and over, especially with fentanyl. Um, but you also, this pa- person really is in pain and you want to take that pain seriously. So it's such a fine balance of like deciding how are we going to one, treat this pain and two, what's going to be the long-term solution? Because, you know, opioids, they become so addictive because they, re- they're really good at relieving pain and they also alter your brain chemistry. So you kind of crave it in a way. So it's really difficult in situations like sickle cell anemia where it's chronic pain. Um, And this person really truly is in pain, but you don't want to just keep feeding the opioid, you know, I don't even want to say addiction, but you don't want to turn it into an opioid addiction. So it's really tricky and challenging in situations of chronic pain where you want to believe the person that they're, they're really in pain and you don't want to like have this bias that they're just Mm -hmm. trying to seek drugs, you know, because that is frequently how people view them. Mm -hmm. Um, but it it really isn't the case. They, They really do have an issue that, that the pain is very severe and you just need to find a way to manage it better. Thank you for that. That's crazy. I did not know that. I learned so many things. Okay. Well, thank you, Danielle for being here and doing this interview with me um yeah that's it thank you